All right, guys, this is going to be your review of the study guide. Um, now, I know I haven't been there the last couple of days. Hopefully, this is going to help. I'm going to try to position this so that you guys can actually read it um, with my face. Move over here, face, please. Okay, now, the study guide will be a very helpful thing. Other things that will be very helpful are going to be our usual things like, like Quizlet. Um, Quizlet is going to be extremely helpful with this test. Uh, just reviewing and repetition, the study guide, going over these things, they're going to be very helpful. The test is coming up tomorrow, so make sure that you go ahead and do all this stuff to prepare. Now, if you haven't checked the key with the study guide yet, it is posted. It is there for you. Get on there. That's what this is. Make sure that you look at it. Now, one of the big things that's going to be on here is organelles, right? That was one of the big things that we did so long ago. Um, now, hopefully over the last couple of days, you've been able to do a little review. If you haven't, you still have time to do a little review with it. Um, if you're struggling with the organelles, guys, do Quizlet. Now, I'm going to go through some of these right now. I'm going to go through some of these today. Uh, just the big ones, the ones that I really want to emphasize, make sure that we're understanding. Okay, But if you're struggling with these at all, you can't remember them, do Quizlet. Okay, Number one, let's just look at this one, the chloroplast. Remember, this is what we just talked about. This is our most recent thing with, with uh, photosynthesis. Photosynthesis happens inside of the plant cells within the chloroplast. Right now, that's kind of related to the site where energy is made. Okay, so because we remember when the cells, they especially plant cells, they use photosynthesis to create sugar, but then they take that sugar and they break it down in order to make that energy, release that energy, and that happens within the mitochondria. Okay, mitochondria, powerhouse of the cell, mitochondria where energy is made. Uh, some of the other big ones, if we remember the ER, now the ER I feel like is going to trip up some people. This is the internal delivery system of the cell. I want you guys to remember the organelle minute to win it stations lab that we did at the very beginning of this unit when you guys were sliding these magnets across the table. You were playing the role of the ER. You were playing the role of the internal delivery system. You were delivering these magnets from one side to another. And those magnets were representing proteins. They were representing ribosomes. So you were doing a nice job of delivering those from one side to the other. Uh, ribosomes, another big one in here. They produce those proteins. Lysosomes, they break down those old warm parts. Uh, remember, this was the station in the lab where you guys were throwing garbage away. You're removing the waste. You're breaking it down. You're getting rid of it. That's what lysosomes are all there for. Um, now, this again, this is an important part. I think some of you are going to gloss over this one. You're going to kind of skip this. But understanding the certain organelles that are found in plant cells but not in animals, it's going to help you identify cells um, so that if you're looking at a cell and you see, oh, this has a cell wall, you have a pretty good idea that it's going to be a plant cell. Whereas if you're looking at it and you don't see any chloroplasts, you don't see anything, you're probably going to go, okay, this is probably not a plant cell. This might be an animal cell considering it doesn't have a chloroplast. You also want to know the four things that are in all cells. Every single cell has these four things. They have genetic material. That's our DNA. They also have cell membranes. They have that jelly that's called a cytoplasm and they have ribosomes because all cells need to make proteins. Right. Uh, now, going back a little bit to the eggmosis lab, understanding the difference between diffusion and osmosis. Um, now, diffusion, let's think about this for a second. This is kind of like the food coloring. Now, I'm going to try to go to a slide here real quick. And there's my face. Perfect. So it pops up. If you guys remember the video that you watched for diffusion, it was all about how it moves from an area of high concentration to low concentration. Go ahead and watch when this resets up here. Watch how the, all the dots are super concentrated. As time goes on, look at how they disperse. They go from an area where it is very crowded to an area where it is less crowded. And this actually takes no energy to occur. I didn't do anything, right? If I drop the food coloring in the water, I don't do anything to make that thing spread out. I didn't have to stir it. I didn't have to apply heat. I didn't have to do anything. It was going to do it automatically. Now, this is similar to osmosis. But it's just the fact that instead of food coloring moving, in the case of osmosis, it's going to be the water that moves. So think back to our lab eggmosis, right? When we put the egg into water, what happened? The water ran into the egg. It wanted to go from an area where it was more concentrated. There was more water on the outside of the egg. So it went into an area where it was less concentrated. It went into the egg where there was less water. 
And when we put it in corn syrup, now there all of a sudden there was more water on the inside than there was on the outside. So what did the water do? It ran out of the egg and into the corn syrup. It caused it to lose all that weight, all that mass that we were measuring. All right. So osmosis and diffusion are the same thing. It's just diffusion or sorry, it's just osmosis is the diffusion of water. It's the movement of that water. Okay, uh, let's go back to this real quick. So are they different from each other? Yeah, they both require no, no energy. It's just osmosis is the same thing for water. That's pretty simple. Um, I would review this. Can you identify what some of these organelles look like um, inside of a, of a cell? And it's mostly just can you, can you look at the cells and can you say, okay, this is plant versus animal. That's going to be very helpful. Okay, it's going to be very, very helpful. Now, the last big thing that we did with these cell processes was photosynthesis and cell respiration. Now, I know this is something that you guys did entirely on your own. Um, so I know that this one may be a little bit of a struggle, but I, I think that you guys will be okay with it if you remember this idea back here. Okay, So this concept right here, remember, it was, it was photosynthesis in which you took carbon dioxide, you took water, you added that sunlight into it, and what did you get? You got sugar, right? We saw that when we watched the video and they were talking about the sugar cane plants. They took carbon dioxide, they took water, and they took sunlight, and they got sugar and oxygen. That's photosynthesis, the production of sugar, the production of food and oxygen. The only difference between photosynthesis and cell respiration is this right here. Watch the arrow in here in the middle. This is the only thing that changes. The direction. Everything else stays the same. Now you're taking sugar and oxygen and you're burning it. You remember lighting the marshmallow on fire in the video. You all of a sudden added that liquid oxygen to it and it went up in flames because you're adding the oxygen and the sugar and you're getting a massive release of energy right here. But you're also getting carbon dioxide and water as byproducts with that. The main thing is energy, right? This is the mitochondria. It's the powerhouse of the cell. Its purpose is to give us energy, but it's giving us that energy through the process of cellular respiration, right? That's how we get it, okay? All right, let's go back real quick. Uh, and, and the explanation of the relationships that we see right here, they're opposites, right? And we just saw that with the arrow, that they are total opposites. You just flip the direction that one goes, okay? You just flip that arrow entirely. Now, this one down here is a little bit of practice, right? You just essentially got to say, all right, well, what am I looking at here? And I think once you actually take a look at what is moving in the situation, you'll be able to figure out exactly what type of transport this is. So it's either osmosis, diffusion, or active transport. Active transport, we haven't talked a whole lot about, other than we know that it's the opposite. So instead of it going from an area of high concentration, it's got to go to low concentration, or from low concentration to high concentration. Let's see an example of that. So first one is osmosis, and we know that this is osmosis because look at what's moving. It's water. Water is doing the moving, therefore it's got to be osmosis. In this situation, the fact that we smell the cookies around a different part of the room, that has got to be diffusion. If you bake cookies in your house and somebody walks in and goes, ah, oh, it smells delicious. There's nobody applying energy to get the smell. There's no fan running to get the smell to go from one side of the house to the other. You just smell it. It is something that naturally happens. The diffuser in the front of my room, though it's not very powerful, right? It does give a little bit of a scent to the room. And this is without energy. It's going from an area where it's super concentrated by the cookies to an area of less concentration. Same thing here in this picture. Look at the amount of units of oxygen on the inside of the cell, right? 100 units, it's going into an area where there is only 40 units. That's going from an area of high concentration, 100, to an area of lower concentration, only having 40. Here's, our, here's one of our examples of active transport right down here. Look at the direction of where it's going. We're going from 19 units of sodium inside of this neuron right here to 155 units of sodium. So we're going from an area where it's less crowded, there's not a whole lot of stuff in here, to an area where it's extremely crowded. Think about a rock concert. You guys are at a concert. You're ready to go. You're, you, all you want to do is get to the front of the concert. That's going to require you to be very active. That's going to require you to expel a lot of energy in order to get to the front of the concert where it's more concentrated, where it's more crowded. If you want to go from an area where you can just kind of hang back and it's not very crowded, it's kind of cool. If you want to get to the front where it's super crowded, 
you got to use a lot of energy. Um, this guy too, I, we haven't really talked a whole lot about this, but just think about this is, you know, this is one of those cells. Think about the amoeba where we saw this, where it was obtaining food. It was obtaining energy. If you're going to obtain, if you're going to move, you're going to have to use energy. That's a form of active transport. It is surrounding the particle of food. The last one here with the fish, water moves in and out of the body, saltwater fish into the environment. Okay. So we're going from an area where it is 98% percent water and it's moving into an area where it is 96.5 percent of water again the thing that's moving here is the water okay guys listen i i know there's a lot I, there's no way in a 10 minute video 11 minute video that i can do it justice that it needs with the amount of work that unfortunately i haven't really been able to be there to help you with the only thing i can tell you is go back and re-watch the videos okay go back and, and recheck out the videos on uh, diffusion, osmosis, active transport. Go back and look at the video on photosynthesis, cell respiration. They will help you. And then the best thing to do for these organelles is to just do Quizlet as many times as you can so that you really feel like you understand it. Okay. Again, I'm going to help you out as best as I can from home. If you guys are, if you guys are struggling with it, if you need help on something, send me an email, let me know. I'll be there. Uh, I'll do the best that I can from home. All right, guys, let me know. Hopefully you see you soon.